Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the incredibly talented and gorgeous actress, singer, musician, and the very talented daughter of Golden Age of Hollywood icon Buddy Epson, Miss Kiki Epson. Hello and welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you oh so much gosh. for having me. <laughs> that was that was a mouthful. You had so much great stuff going on, and I, I want to say you are such a great singer. Like I was like googling you and watching all kinds of stuff on YouTube, and I was like, oh my god, I don't know why you're not like the greatest jazz like singer on the planet that everybody like just knows your name. You should be, and, and you're just and fabulous. Me, still time, still time. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. There's and lots me, of time. Meeting you was a fluke. Talk about things that have to be. Timing, right? Right. I mean, I had we not. A, to... I didn't have a clue who you were. We were in the lobby, and I said, "Oh, look at that pretty lady. She looks like Lauren Bacall." <laughs> and that's how I believe I started. I started the conversation. I think I said, "You look like Lauren Bacall." And then I found out who you were, and I was so impressed because I thought your dad was absolutely, probably one of the uh, most adorable, charming, talented. Love the way he swung when he danced, those legs and all, like a big, big puppet. Oh, he was terrific. Crazy. He was definitely oversighted by Hollywood. Um, for those of you out there who don't know who we're talking about because you're young, if ever you've seen the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's with Audrey Hepburn and George Pappard, you will remember, uh, what, was his t what was his title, his name again, you died in that movie? Uh, Doc Politely. Doc Doc. Politely. Yeah, she was Doc married. She was married. She was married. She was married to Doc when she was a little girl in the hillbilly, and he came to get her, remember? And then they put him on a bus. That's Buddy Epson. Hang also, on, before you keep wait, talking, though. Wait, cause... one more thing. Also, he danced with Shirley Temple years ago. So hold on. Before mm -hmm. we, I know you already know, Ron, but we need to do this because this goes out and not everybody. A lot of people might be tuning in because you're on and they've never heard of us before. So I know you know, Ron, but we'll do our introduction to my cool, outrageous man about town, Ron Russell. Hi. Then, I just got so excited. Then we've got the man go behind. Right then we have the man behind the boards, Chad Murphy. <laughs> Hello, Kiki. Welcome to the show. Good to have you. Thank you. We have almost every country represented in the chat room, so just say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hi. <laughs> there you go. And everybody, what Ron was talking about is we went to a movie premiere called When I Sing by Linda Chorney, who Which we had on the fabulous, show. Which was fabulous, by the way. And Ron, all he did was bitch for two hours driving to L.A. We're going to go see this shitty movie. I'm not going to like this movie. Why are you dragging me to this? And all he did was bitch, and he was mean to everybody until no, he no, saw no, no, the no, film. No, 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 Wait a second. You're making me out to be a horror. I had a TV <laughs> show. No, I had a TV show where I, in, where I interviewed, guess who? Lauren Bacall. Cliff Robertson, uh, Jane Russell, uh, the list just goes on and on and on. So when I used to go to red ties or red carpets, black ties, they were always wonderful. But now that the theater, that Hollywood has changed and there's a new genre of people, I go to these weird kind of things in crappy theaters with people looking like rag pickers. <laughs> And I don't care for them. I don't. And we it, look you know, like rag pickers. Now, I'm sure because of your dad, you've been to the galas of the of the 50s and 60s that were wonderful in yeah. 70s and yeah. 80s. So I was. And that is something I'm trying to reclaim. I, when I do go out, I try to dress, you know, dress up and bring back look, a little bit of glamour because I, I agree look, with you. You look like. How do you think I saw you? If you look like a rag pick, I would have walked by you. I'm a snob. <laughs> You look, you look so stunningly beautiful, and you were Lauren Bacall, and I had to compliment you because Destiny was bringing me your way so I could promote your musical that's going to go to Broadway because it's going to be sensational. So you now, guys, wait a minute, I'm not finished, and you can have the floor. Did you give us good seats? <laughs> you're the first ones on the list. Are you? You're going to be totally hooked up. Okay, there you good, go. You love good. it. So, so you guys, you saw the trailer we played before Kiki came on. Uh, the name of her of her one. It's a one woman, woman play, right? For all yeah, for all intents and purposes, I have a band that backs me up, but I am the, the main uh, character. There is a little little surprise in there, but I don't want to give it away. Um, but yes, it's called "To Dad with Love," a tribute to Buddy Ebsen, and it is a, a daughter's search to reconnect to her father. So it's starring you know, Kiki Epson, you guys, and it's Friday, October 12th sat at 8 p.m., Saturday, October 13th at 8 p.m., Sunday, October 14th at 2 p.m. at Theater West, which is in L.A. on, I don't know how you pronounce that, Boulevard, Kahua, how do you Canoga. pronounce that? Kawanga. 
Kanoka. There you go. Kuanga. What did Kuanga you call Kuanga Boulevard it? West. I don't know. Kunaka. I don't know what it is. And for anybody who's younger, you do know Buddy Epson. You might Kunaka. not you might not know him from Dancing with Shirley Temple, even though I can't imagine anybody who didn't see Shirley Temple as a kid. But 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 in future uh, later years, he was he was the Beverly Hillbillies and Barnaby Jones and. Uh, That's right. Uh, all kinds of like great credits. And but if you watch Turner Classic movies, you're you see him see all the him. time. In the 1930s, when he must have been 22, 23 years old, what a handsome six foot five, skinny Balink he was. Oh, and he had a grace about him. Six, three and a half. Oh, six, six three three and, and a half. I thought he was six five. He looked so half. tall. But he had a grace about him, the way he moved. He was always in dance. Even when he was not dancing, he had this graceful, swan like. You know, momentum. He was fabulous. He was one of my favorite people. I look forward to seeing him in films. And I'm so pleased to know you, my darling. And I think the chip oh. off the old block, as they say. So, yes. wait. Sing, all the records sing. behind you. All the records. Those are all your records? Uh, well, they're all records I was involved with. I'm, I've been in the music uh, business for a long time, a few decades now. And I'm a keyboard player. And I sing and I write music. And I've worked with groups like Chicago. Um, Tracy Chapman or a few of the records up there oh my and God, a lot of them were Jim. actually playing on tour you know going on tour and supporting their records you went on much. tour with Belinda so, Carlisle I, right you went on tour with Belinda Carlisle huh you when, on, I, was, I don't know when, but it was like you. I saw. Yeah. Uh, I, I googled you and found out all kinds of stuff and I was like oh my god I love Belinda oh, Carlisle yes. Well, she, yeah it was a great tour that was in 91 and I went out with Al Jarreau, Boz Skaggs uh, I spent 20 years with Christopher Cross. Oh, my God. My guy, my guy Christopher. Oh, he like, you like Michael oh, McDonald, too. Uh, Michael and Christopher, you hit two of my favorites. You know, we we listen, yeah. to, Yacht, we listen to Yacht Rock all the time, which is 311, and they play yeah. all those people that you just mentioned. They're all on repeat there. <laughs> I cannot turn on those radio stations without going, oh, yeah, I played that song. Uh-huh, and I did that one. And that, was, <laughs> that was a wonderful life. Wonderful, wonderful experience, and I love. I always just wanted to play in a band. So, me coming out. Although I was raised in the theater, my mother had a theater. My dad was a, a major actor. My my sister was an actress, and so. But that was a little crowded for me. So I went into music, and I made my seven records. And you know, I was a rock and roller from the '70s, and my dad wanted me to sing jazz, which is how this whole thing came about. Is that we sort of butted heads about our my career, and I went on and did my own thing. And then he got older and we started to disconnect. And right at the end of his life, we reconnected in a very powerful, powerful way. And I made this record for him, for him after he passed away and dedicated to, it to him for his Father's Day. Caraco Sessions is all the songs that he loved, songs from shows he was in, like Moon River, Codfish Ball, um, Easy to Love from Broadway Melody of 1936. That started me on this journey where I found a trunk filled with all this memorabilia. This is after he passed away. And I mean, I, I pulled some stuff out here just to kind of tease you with, but I've got like handwritten letters that talk about him working with Shirley Temple and, and creating the dance for the codfish ball. I'm reading his day-to-day -day account. I have the, the script from Born to Dance, you know, the, the MGM musical. And, oh, this one's amazing. This is the songbook from The Wizard uh -huh. of Oz. That is so cool. Now, Chad, Chad, our man behind the boards, well, before we brought you on, he said he was Googling Buddy Epson and found out that he, he was the voice of the Tin Man. He just wasn't in the suit, but he did all the singing for the Tin Man. He was. <laughs> so here's the thing. and this, My show really talks about all these things and tell, you know, brings truth to a lot of the heart. Part of the stories people know. He was cast in the Tin Woods. He, he was the Tin Man. They, there is footage. He was in the movie. He and he got, got sick from the makeup yes. that he inhaled. He inhaled the aluminum dust, and it coated right. his lungs, and he couldn't get oxygen to his blood, and he collapsed, went in the hospital, almost died, and then was recast. So there's footage of him in the movie, but they, they scrapped that footage because they read, if you know any of that history, The Wizard of Oz, we had a lot of problems, and for you know the first month, they ended up scrapping the director, right. the footage, they changed all of it. Um, yeah. Judy Garland's hair, blonde brunette, you know. So, yeah, there's a lot of interesting stories about my dad. And then there's my story about my growing up with him and living and growing up under the shadow of such fame and how I emerged and found my own voice, you know, and I continue to evolve. And I think it's really inspiring for people, especially as we get older, to know that we're not obsolete anymore. It's, it's business. Oh, yay, yay, no, it's yay, true. yay. 
I love you more now. I'm an, I'm fighting ageism. Right. Listen, so what? Too so bad we, Bob. Wait. Too bad Bob Osborne is not still alive. Because I would have called Robert and I would have said to him, "You must get this guy on TCM." This you, the gal, and she's got to show her memorabilia, and she must talk about her dad the way Kim Novak did, Sophia yeah. Loren did. Oh, that you've would got, be You've got to be on that show. I'm I serious. Think you're right. Everybody out there listening, if anybody knows that, because I don't know the new people there, that fellow with the glasses. What's his name? The new one? Yeah, no. Uh, 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 Mankiewicz. I don't know him. I have no con. Bob, I knew. Bob, uh, I knew from yeah. years ago. But I agree with you. I, agree I bet we could contact. I bet we could just. I bet we could just contact them, though. I bet you could just if contact I don't have them. them. I, I could have years ago. I had Bob's New York. That Mankiewicz guy tweets with me. I yeah, don't know. Like, I, remind me that. I, remind me that. Right. And let, let's see if we can happen. put something together and see if because, we can make that you know, happen. It, it's about your dad, and he's so much of Hollywood. Yeah. And I think it's time that people take these people out of the shadows. I'm sick and tired of just the superstars. You know. Who I love, Cary Grant. I mean, you know, who doesn't love Cary Grant? But I mean, uh, I'm sure you've, your dad had stories oh. about was Shirley Temple a bitch, a little brat? You know, was she nice? Well, you was know what? I was just reading the letter, and I was I lit right before you called about how he was talking about I'm working on this number, and he said she was a very well behaved, amazingly unspoiled child, but she was a little clip. He called her a little clip, which means she knew what was going on, and she had a healthy disgust for the business because they worked her like a dog. I mean, they, it was yeah. like, you called it slavery. I mean, oh, they Judy, were, Judy Garland, the same thing. Same thing. And so my dad, there's a, there's a famous story about, you know, that my dad tells. He has a great autobiography, by the way, which we, we have at the show. It's uh, The Other Side of Oz by Buddy Epson. Yay. And, Thank God he wrote this hold, hold it up longer. Hold it up longer so you, people you, can see. You didn't see. hold it up longer. You guys, enough. it says an, an autobiography, The Other Side of Oz, Buddy Epson. And that way you can see what he looks like, too, anybody who's looking. You he can was see a him. handsome guy. Even as an old Very. man, he was handsome. Yeah, he was I mean, a he handsome lived, senior. Absolutely. And that's Nine, how, he, the, the man I grew up with. He was over 50 when I was born. So my, I'm the youngest of six girls. I have a brother that's a year younger. So I really wanted to search out the guy. He didn't talk much, you know, about his early career. We didn't know the story of The Wizard of Oz until we were adults. Oh wow! I, mean, it's well, really I, I don't think I don't think Buddy's personality was extrovert. I no. think he was an introvert. Introvert. Yeah. You could see that in his work. He was yeah. very shy and very withdrawn in his work. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but on stage, absolutely in this element, loved his audience. Was totally that was where he connected. You know, to that spiritual. It was spiritual for him, an experience to 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 uh, entertain. He was like you. Well, yeah, or maybe I'm like you. No, you're you're very open and out there and honest, and I know I'm going to, and listen, I'm not blowing smoke up your butt because I hate to do that. I hate people like that. You know, darling, let's do lunch, phony Hollywood. I despise those people. I avoid them. What I'm saying to you is I know already by who you are that it's going to be a great news. I want Stan Zimmerman to come. Could we, I'm going to, can I invite somebody? Absolutely. <laughs> do, you know who, do you know who Stan Zimmerman is? I don't. The writer for the Golden Girls. He writes oh, for. Please. Wait a second, I'm not finished. He writes for Gilmore Girls. He wrote the Gilmore Girls, the first season play. of the Golden the Girls. <laughs> wait a second, he's got the hit play out right now, The Diary of Anne Frank, done with all Hispanic cast in Hollywood. They're screaming about it. Excuse me, oh, not finished. He did he's the Brady got, Bunch movies. He's got a knife to the heart, which is a, about a Jewish, a Jewish couple. A Jewish circumcision. Circumcision. It's one, Stan Zimmerman is the best, and he's pushing a new thing called Silver Foxes, which will be the Golden Girls, but done with four gay men in Palm Springs. Oh, fantastic. So you're going to love Stan Zimmerman. Now, you somebody you like have it. to know. You have to know him. I'm going to well, invite you know, him. We're looking for people that will help us take it to the next step. You know, we, we've been doing it for a couple of years. This is a brand new show. It's different. We did it last summer, but it's, it has so many new things in it. keeps morphing. keeps getting better. And I know my dad's right by my side just going, he feeds me little things. Things pop into my head and th lines and things to write. I find new pictures and new stories. It's really amazing experience for me. Now, I want to, I'm going to say something because I'm one of these uh, people that really don't care what I ask because, <laughs> you know, you're my victim now. Um, well, you were like a brat and dad and you didn't get along because you were a hippie and you were way out there and you were not what daddy wanted you to be. What did, why, did, why didn't you speak to him for that period of time? You know, what? okay, all right, well, 
I touch on it a little bit in the show. Uh, my parents were having some marital, marital problems, and we had two different residences and um, that we could go to. You know, we had a, a place where I rode horses. I used to show horses, and then we had a place on the beach. And when they started having trouble, they just started living in different places, but they weren't divorced. So we didn't see him a lot. So he will, you know, from pretty much the age of 12, I suppose, I was really my older sisters sort of raising me. And I mean, we saw him and he came into the picture that, but that wasn't when the disconnect started. It, that was sort of the distance of me growing up. And then he wanted me to go into, I, he wanted me to sing jazz. And I, I was sort of a seventies rock and roller. I was, you know, completely that. And I didn't know what I wanted. And I just went off in search of my own voice. And he thought, you know, like a lot of fathers, I know what's good for you. You should do this. And when I said, you know, I'm going to do that, he sort of had his feelings hurt. And I was like, well, I got to do what I'm going to do. And then later we, we had some issues with just him not really getting the type of music that I was putting out. And that hurt my feelings. Like he just didn't understand it. Therefore, he wouldn't support it. And it hurt my feelings. And he got, he, my parents got divorced. He moved on, married a new woman. And started a new life. And I was in my 20s. And so for 10 years, we talked, but we weren't close. Right. Weren't close. And, okay. And, and what, what, year was your, what year was your father born? In uh, 1908. Okay. 1908. People, oh my, God. My, mother, my, mother, my mother was born 1910. My father was born 1905. People from that generation did not understand the change in music, no. the change in people. She, he wanted you to be a vaudevillian. Okay, my mother was Jenny Gabriel, the silent movie actress, and I grew up and my mother said to me, you will not be in the business because you will starve. What do you think? You're going to be a movie star. So, you know, that's the kind of crap I had to listen to. Um, right. I understand. I simply as I left the house to go see my friends, I used vulgarity at my mother in my mind. By saying "f you," you don't know what you're talking about. Why? Because you gave it up to get married and have kids, and you you hate yourself because you didn't pursue your career. Well, screw you. I'm going to do mine, and here I am, 78 years old, still working. Yeah. And and my mother's alongside of me, going, "Oh, oh, oh." Right. <laughs> I mean, I, don't you feel like I feel such a powerful, more of a connection, a wonderful, beautiful spiritual connection with my parents having passed. My, ma my mother was in the theater too, and she was a ball buster. Real, both, between the both of them, it was like, oh my God. I mean, they were brilliant, but they were, it was hard for them because their way of supporting us was just to be kind of hard on us. <laughs> you know? No, I understand. My there father was... There was no was... in my family. I had to audition for my mother, I, you know, same with my dad. It was not easy. <laughs> I had the same thing. My father was a set designer. He wanted me to be an architect. He wanted me to be a draftsman, all that boring crap. My mother wanted me to work for Con Edison because they give you benefits when you retire. Mm -hmm. My sister married a documentary movie producer who really, I mean, I was surrounded by people and no one supported me. And no one right. said, go for it. They all had their feelings what I should do. And I think yeah. it's because they knew I was gay. And they figured you ain't going anywhere in this business because you act like a fruit. And, you know, I think that's what it was. You know, gay well, act. I think deep down, you're, you know, I know my parents loved me and they were trying to protect me. And I know my dad was, you know, in that era too, I'm going to protect you. We don't want you to suffer like I did. My dad struggled hard. I mean, he struggled. Of course he They're, did. You know, they, they lost all their money in the crash of the Florida, Florida land boom. My dad had to drop out of med school. He went to New York with $26. He didn't even have enough money for an overcoat. He stuffed the newspaper down his shirt to stay warm when he traveled from the subway to his sure. apartment. He lost parts. He, he became, he had, so, he was ill from that makeup. He, MGM dropped him. He went through so many highs and lows. But it, and he had people, he had William Morris Jr. was his agent, dropped him and said, quit. This was right after the war. Said, you're, you're, you're washed up. You're, you're, you were part of a dance team and now you're washed up. Television doesn't want you. Bullshit. So, Look what happened. Yeah, <laughs> Screw you. A, young wife and a couple of kids and it's like, what are you going to do? So he just kept going. And that's inspirational to me. And I understand where he's coming from. And come on, we're too old to hold grudges anymore. You know, this is our life. What are you going to do with it? Carry the baggage or are you going to break free and find your own voice? I love what find... you're doing. I love what you're well, doing. With finding your... Yeah, go ahead. I, wanna... I have two things because somebody, did you, do you, did you play with the symphony orchestra? I, I have. I've um, performed with the Pasadena Pops Orchestra. I did that uh, last summer. I've worked with the Austin Symphony. Um, 
and in, I've done a lot of pops gigs, like with Christopher Cross, Indianapolis. They're Nashville, like googling huh? you. The, the chat room is googling you, and they're posting up all the stuff she played with the symphony <laughs> and this and that, and they all like love you. They're like well, you're if, if such you, a fascinating a second, guest. Hang on, if you love her so much, and you're in the L.A. area, you want to go to the play. You must get a ticket and come see this wonderful musical. This autobi, the bi not an auto, but a biography of Buddy Epson. What is the price of the tickets? Because people like to know. The, that. the ticket price is twenty five dollars. Very reasonable. You're very yeah. reasonable. That's and not even a lunch. I right, right. Ugh, so, a hamburger um, and malt. Yeah, the twenty-five dollar tickets, and if you check Gold Star, there might be some Gold Star there. But please, you know, come support. It's a, it's beautiful live theater. You'll be where, deeply moved. Where, wait, where do we actually go to get tickets? Chicken where do they go? Do they have ticket uh, theater, Theaterwest.org. Theaterwest.org, you guys, to get tickets to Dad to with Love, a tribute yeah. to Buddy Epson. And then my other question is, growing growing up when you were like five, six, seven, eight, you know, and your dad uh, is a famous star, like, did you did you actually get that, like, when you're that young? Do you get uh, that your parent is somebody really question. important? Great question, because I talk about it on my show, too. Because there was definitely a shift of when we were, when we finally, because my brother and I are the youngest. We saw our dad on television when we were about three and four years old. And we were like, this is magic. Because first of all, we had one of those giant console TVs. You know, it takes up your whole living room. It, there's dad in black and white. This is magic. What is this thing? Our dad's on the, we call it the box. So we also thought every dad was on television. We thought everybody's dad was an actor. Because we didn't understand what acting was. Oh, dads just appear on this thing. And then the other cute story is that we kept watching the te television during the day thinking we could find him on other shows. Because if he was on that show, surely he was on another show somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> During the channel, we finally found a show that we would watch every day. And my mother finally came in and said, what are you doing? And we said, we're watching Dad. And she goes, that's Florence Welk. <laughs> oh, go away. I can't believe you. Go away. Go away. You got it. You know, when I interviewed Lorna Luft, my first question to Lorna was, I hate to ask you this stupid question, Lorna, but what was it like being the daughter to Judy Garland and the sister of Liza Minnelli? And she said, I have no idea. I never had another mother to compare it to. And that's, that's exactly the answer, you know. That's true. <laughs> we don't really know. Uh, I was not really into the celebrity part of it. We were also raised outside of Hollywood. We, we were in Hollywood for a couple of years, and then we moved to Balboa Island. We were around boats and, you know, the outdoors. I, then we later moved to the Santa Monica Mountains, got into horses, which I still do. I still do a lot of work with horses and horse rescue. Um, so I love performing, but the celebrity part of it is still kind of creepy to me. It's, it's creepy to me, too. Yeah. Yeah. We saw a lot of, you know, just people swarming my dad. And I didn't, that wasn't a life that really appealed to me, dealing with I, that. I, oh. They're, I hate, pardon my word, but they're called star fuckers. Mm -hmm. And there are so many of them in Palm Springs, you could vomit. If you're a yeah. celebrity here, they crawl up you. They all want to hang out with you, use your name, invite you to parties just to make yeah. the parties better. And I despise those people, and I avoid them like the plague. Well, because it's, it's nothing to do, it's, it has nothing to do with art. It has no. nothing to do with creativity. No. No. And that's where I reside. People right say to me, like, mind. people. People, people say to me, what's it like being an actor and going to make a movie? I said, what's it like? You get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, you go into a freezing, ugly studio that stinks, all ugly beams and wires hanging all over. Then they torture you by pulling your hair out of your head. They slap some crap on your face that makes it itchy. And then about five hours later, when they finally got the lighting right and the setup right, you have to go out there and do your lines. And then you, somebody forgets a line and you have to do it all day long till 11 o'clock at night. So let yeah. me tell you something. It's a factory, and yeah. we're slaves, and we're treated like slaves. Directors yeah. are mean. They yell at you. They curse at you. Other actors get annoyed with you if you don't do what you're supposed to do. They run yeah. to their dressing room. It's so, not as glamorous as oh, everybody it's a thinks. Horrible, <laughs> it's a horrible <laughs> business. I'll tell you, my dad was an avid sailor, and he loved sailing. He loved his boats. He was in the Coast Guard in the, in the World War II. And, you know, that was where his heaven was. And whenever he wasn't in the studio, he was on the boat. He would race his boat in Sonata, race, race to Hawaii and back. And and I think he wished he had more time doing that. He also wished, he, he, he also loved to write musicals. So I, he wrote a few, he never had the hit musical. So I'm really happy to be doing this kind of work in his honor that's on the stage, it honors my, my family and, and, and the real honest journey of the ups and downs. It's not all great, but you can end up in such a beautiful place if you, if you allow it. Absolutely. Well, how many times was your dad married? Uh, 
three, <laughs> three times. Oh, in Hollywood, that's nothing. Second. My mother was a second. Um, they were married for 38 years. Oh, wow. You know, I asked Lana time. Turner how many years are you married? She had to think. <laughs> <laughs> she did. She stopped. Well, she was old and not well. But she stopped and she said, well, let me see now. <laughs> and she had a count in her head, I think seven times or some stupid thing like that. I think yeah. Jaja Gabor, Jaja Gabor had them all beat. Oh, really? I think she had like 11 or something. I don't know. It's ridiculous. So three is not bad. So which yeah. one are you? Are you middle? I am the second marriage, yes. Um, and that is, uh, my dad had two daughters from his first marriage, and then he had the five of us with his second. And um, his, thir his third, He was. it was later in life. And, he, you know, he, he was passionate about it, all of it. You know, I think so he... He had nine playing. children. He had... Now you're going to make me think. Nine. Eight. No, five, eight, eight children. So was he? Eight, so now you can understand why he wasn't able to divide himself into eight pieces. It's hard. <laughs> well, I had two. by the time we came along, you know, he was over Man. fifty. He was done. Both my parents. He, we had older sister. I, you know, I had older sisters, so they they pretty much raised us. As, okay, that's what families did anyway. Um, but like my brother said, we were basically raised by wolves because after a while, you just sort of figure <laughs> out what to do with yourself. We were driving cars yeah. at you know eight years old, so. Um, you know, we lived I, on a ranch, so. I get that from a lot of uh, celebrities' children who are now my age, you know, whose parents were great, like Barbara, Barbara never had, Barbara Stanwyck never had children, but of that genre, you know, that era of people, mm -hmm. um, Joan Crawford, they loved to show as the most wicked woman in the world, mm -hmm. where, you know, Liza Minnelli and people that knew her daughter, Christina, didn't see that. Right. Either Joan hit it well, or Hollywood decided to really have a ball with Joan Crawford. I'm not saying she was the best parent, but I don't think she was as evil as Mommy Dearest. What do you think? Of uh, Joan Crawford? Yeah, have I, you any input of that? I, any kids talk you know, about it? Oh, um, well, not, not about Joan Crawford, but I mean, I have, I'm, I have friends that are in the, in, that are, whose parents were big stars, you know, like um, really good friends with the Ferreras, you know, which is um, Jose, Jose Ferrer and Rosemary Clooney's children, and also I'm friends with Todd Fisher. And um, the whole the whole Debbie Reynolds um, situation. Yeah, I, I knew you know, Debbie. There's it's a sweet. lot of, you know, comp it's complicated because sometimes, you know, those, especially women in the business, uh, dealt with so much. And um, there's just so many pitfalls, you know, you, from, from just substance abuse to mental illness to just trying to, to, to being taken advantage of and just yes. try, trying to keep yourself afloat. And by men, you know, come in and, you know, uh, t take their money and whatever it is. But... Uh, and the kids just have to, again, like, just dodge the thunderbolts that happen, you know, with, between their parents. And some of them do better than others. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I have, I just have a lot of um, empathy for anybody in my position that grows up with parents that are larger than life. And that are out here trying to make a difference. You know, we're still trying to make a difference, even though our names, you know, they, they, they carry a bit of weight, you know. I love it. Well, look I love at the, it. Look at the, let me just do this one thing. Yeah, two minutes. So well, you gotta hurry up. Uh, Clark Abel and Loretta Young had a child, daughter, out of wedlock. And for so many years, that daughter was denied the right to be Clark Abel's daughter because Loretta Young said she adopted her in Europe. That's how strict Hollywood was. So this poor girl grew up looking exactly like Clark Abel. She even had to have her ears pinned back um, oh and was denied the right to be Clark Abel's daughter. I think that's one of the most horrible stories I've ever heard in Hollywood. Yeah, that's sad. But that she is. finally came forward, and now it's proven that she is Clark Abel's daughter with Loretta Young. Uh, they made a movie together, Clark and Loretta. They fell in love. She got pregnant. Is that the house that Chris lives in? Yeah, my there? friend Chris yeah, Bennett, we... the singer, she lives in Loretta Young's house. You're here in Palm Springs. Yeah, so, I so, so when it. I went there, I kind of was waiting for the vibes and saying, Loretta, you bad girl. Ah. What you did to your daughter all those years denying her her true dad. So real quick, because we got the chat room asking, and we've only got a few minutes to go. Um, they all want to know if you have music. like so where, where can they like hear your music, and do you have music available for sale? Ah. Are you on iTunes or anywhere? Yeah, my iTunes. It's Kiki Ebsen. Kiki Ebsen. K I K I, you guys. Ebsen. E B S E N. Yes, and and I have I have seven records. They're all available on iTunes. You can buy them off my website. Please come to my website and visit me. I do shows locally, all all the time. Um, this is my theatrical show, but I play in clubs and I do original songs. And I would love to. And chat what with is you your all. what What's your actual website? It's KikiEbsen.com. There you go, you guys. Can't and she's also and she's Kiki Epson on Twitter, you guys. But just make sure you spell Kiki K I K I E B S E N. 
That's um, right. That way, that way you can get her on Twitter. She's on Twitter. She plays. You uh, definitely want to go see To Dad With Love, a tribute to Buddy Epson. It's uh, October 12th, 13th, and 14th in L.A. If you know anybody at TCM, tweet to yeah, me or email want, me and let me know because we would love for her to be able to record something talking about her father on TCM. That would be the coolest thing I mean, ever. Absolutely, because he cannot be overlooked by Hollywood. He was such an important uh, part of, of film. Uh, Kiki, how did you get your name? Kiki. My real name is Kirsten. I am I am named actually after my father, who is Christian. That's his real name. And um, I couldn't pronounce it. I said Kiki when I was a little girl. So they so went, okay, cute. my name is Kiki. Well, you are Kiki to me. I and after the show, we're coming backstage to hug and kiss you <laughs> and tell you how wonderful you are or how lousy you are. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt right. lousy. Yeah. <laughs> I doubt lousy because from that trailer, I seriously doubt lousy. Everyone out there listening, if you want to hear music, because music is the food of life, and we know that. A, a Broadway musical, what is more delicious than seeing somebody singing and possibly dancing? So go. Go see this musical. I know you're going to go home and tell your friends about it because she's the daughter of a great star, and that talent is here. And I've witnessed it today, and so have you. And Kiki, my sweet. I've only offered this to certain people. When you come to Palm Springs, if you don't call us and come over for dinner, I'm going to cut your hair to the root. Oh, goodness. <laughs> right down to the yes, root. Sure. I, will be right there. I can't wait. I look forward to it. No, yeah. because Thank we, always, so we always have friends, celebrity friends over, so you'll be in business people, but the nice ones, not the phonies. You'll love it. Kiki, good luck with everything. We can't wait to see and you we'll on see October 12th. With- We'll see you on the stage, and we're gonna e- email me. We're gonna work out that Turner Classic Movie things because yes. I'm gonna work that out. I'm gonna ha- see if we can work that out because I you think should we should be, be able to. I-, I wish Bob was still alive. He would have done it in a minute. Love you. you we'll see Bob. you soon, and thank, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Kiki. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. See, see you next week, everybody. See Thanks you. for tuning see you in. in. Bye. What a delicious woman. Wasn't that fabulous, Delight- Chad? Delightful talent. Every show you guys put together is a good show, no doubt. Well Absolutely. done. Absolutely, you guys. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for being in the chat room. Bye, everybody. We'll see you next week. Next Have a great week. weekend. Later, Bye. Everywhere in. Yo, I'm a Liverpool MC. You can't test me. Big up the girls inside the party. Let's get down to crazy Jimmy. Big up myself and known as Alfie. The one and only the Turkish MC. Always love the clothes of Jimmy. Bitch, I'm your one and one of me. Jimmy Stark, new celebrity. We'll take you out to Jimmy Stars. He'll dress you right. You'll feel like Come up to me and said, Hey mate, wanna go to a party? party, party, party.